Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my book reviews on three books that were part of the literary journey, Moments in the Lives of Women. So essentially, all of these books are going to focus on, I would say, almost the simple moments that are just a given that we all experience, um, but that are going to really bring to life how critical each of these simple moments are such an important part of our life experience, particularly for women because it's all through the lens of female um, narrators. How my book reviews work, I will give every book one to five stars. One star did not like the book, probably didn't even finish reading it. Two stars, man, the book was okay. Three stars, good book, and I'm going to recommend it to some people. Four stars, great book. I loved it and would recommend it to a lot of people. And five stars are those random books that absolutely blow my mind, and I just want you all to read them. As always, there are links below if you're interested in purchasing any of these books. And other than that, do hit subscribe and join us if you are a book fan um, or you just want to hear about books. Maybe you're looking to shop. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start lowest to highest. This is a spoiler-free review as always. So this one I did struggle with a little bit on rating. Um, so The Lives of Girls and Women by Alice Munro. This book I ended up settling on three and a half stars so it definitely felt to me it was a good book but I felt like three stars it was a little bit more than that but it wasn't enough for me to rate it a four star and I'll go into more details on that as I talk through this book. So this book is going to be set in the 1940s and we're going to be following our main character a girl who's growing up and we'll get to experience her into her early adulthood um, in Ontario, can Ontario, Canada. And each of the chapters of this book read almost more like a short story. Um, they're their own. Uh, they essentially are going to always include her, but they sometimes will involve her parents, for example, uncles, friends, people that have come into her life for a specific moment of time. So each one really felt to me almost like a standalone. But as you read all of them together, like some people are going to repeat through multiple stories, like her parents. Um, so you, you do get to kind of have like that feel of like you would with a longer book. The, the ch chapters do go in chronological order, um, but they, they're not back to back. So there's not that continuity, um, meaning one chapter isn't like immediately what occurred and tied into the prior chapter. So again, that's why I would describe it more as like having that short story feel. Some of the chapters I found to be very, you know, they were good. They were definitely a solid three stars. Other chapters, I was just floored by the story and, and was like, God, this one feels more like a four star. And hence why I kind of went landed on the three and a half stars um because i didn't feel like i was fully in the three star it was a good book or it was a great book it was a goodish greatish book <laughs> that's my new thing for three and a half stars all right we're going to deal with everything from very simple basic moments that you will experience growing up to things that are definitely more unique to this character's situation and some of the people that she encountered in both good ways and bad um, I did find Ellis Monroe's writing to be interesting and very engaging. There was very little dramatizing of things, which I found almost interesting because even when there was something horrific that was happening, it was presented in such a matter of fact way that it was almost like it almost reminded me of watching like a black and white film. Um, where you're like, you could see how another author would take that moment and just make it like very um, dramatized, very visual, very intense. And this one was almost very subdued, um, but yet still impactful. And I found that to be really intriguing as I read this book. I would definitely, definitely recommend this. If you're already an Alice Munro fan, um, would love to hear if you read this and how you felt this compared to her other books. But I would definitely recommend this to people that do enjoy reading um, at a, a historical fiction, because I think this is a unique way to see a specific period of time, the 1940s. Um, but if you're also just a fan of women's literature, where you're getting a feel for um, different types of female experiences, I think this is another solid read for those of you. All right, the next one 
And just to let you guys know, this literary journey, I did not say this in the beginning, a while ago, it's been sitting in my office a while, I subscribed to um, a book subscription called Capsule Books that is sadly no longer in um, active. This was one of the capsules. I cannot, I think it was called Frozen in Time was this particular capsule. Um, I know some of you were also subscribers to Capsule Books, so would love to hear if you got this capsule and then what you thought of these books, if you remember, because this was like probably two, three years ago now. All right, the next book, and I'll move this one in a little bit so you can see this really beautiful cover. Um, this is sort of a more, it's nonlinear, but it's more of a poetry um, poetry collection, but it's going to essentially follow one theme. They're not going to be completely disconnected. And it's by Meg Flores, and it's Flores, perhaps, and it's called We Died in Water. So this is going to really focus on the experience of relationships coming and going. And she's going to use the um, metaphor of like the ocean, the waves and the oceans to really kind of bring that to life but this is so much about falling in love and then loss the heartbreak and then falling in love and um it is it is beautifully written i was engaged right out the gate i am not actually a huge poetry fan i've, I've tried to read a lot of poetry and some poetry i have fallen in love with but it's very unusual like i don't consider myself a good reviewer of poetry just because i don't read enough of it it doesn't i don't seem to connect with it um, as often as I do just like basic um, full narrated stories. So I'm always hesitant to write this one. So coming from a non-poetry reader, this was one of those rarer poetry books that completely pulled me in. And it really feels, it reads almost more like a story because um, it does, even though it's referred to as non-linear, it does follow a fairly linear path with some jumps back in history, but it feels very well connected um, where I came out of it with a good sense of um, almost like she could have written a full blown short story. And it, it I, I felt like I came out of this with the same amount of understanding and information as I would have with a well done short story. So um, maybe that's also another reason why I, it engaged me um, so well. Just a beautiful, beautiful book. So I would definitely recommend this to poetry fans. But if you're like me and you're like, I kind of get intrigued by poetry, but it's really hit or miss for me, this is one I would definitely um, recommend. Okay, the next book. Um, <laughs> I was told they're Bee Cake by Sloan Cros Crosley. Crosley. Four star read for me. I absolutely love this book. So this is going to be a collection of essays. And we're going to be following um, her through childhood into her through her 20s. And um, she is younger than me, for sure. Um, I want to say she was probably born in the late 80s, mid 80s. And a lot of her childhood memories are set in the 90s. So I think that's just important to highlight because some people may have a hard time with that. I definitely did not. Um, there's definitely authors where that are my age, and I you read them, and you're like, oh, yes, I remember that. I remember that. I saw it through the same lens. I was a child at that time, too. And despite the fact that I didn't have that age connection with the author, I thoroughly enjoyed each and every essay. So her intelligence, her humor that she brought into the describing each of these moments in her lives um, was so engaging that um, I did not find it unrelatable, I guess you could say, as her reader being of a different age range. Um, she is going to talk about everything from very basic um, moments in life, like moving from one apartment to another, um, will be one essay, to much more personal, um, intense moments, um, such as, you know, fear, thoughts, feelings around physical illness, um, there's just a tremendous, tremendous range um, of topics. But each essay I found really pulled me in. Um, it didn't matter what the topic was. And I was giggling while reading it, snorting sometimes. <laughs> like I said, very intelligent and a lot of humor. Uh, so this this was, I highly would recommend this book. Um, I was told there'd be cake. 
each essay you can read. You don't have to read them back to back. I don't think you'll really lose anything. So if you're looking for something you can just kind of pick up, get a quick fix and put down, this is a solid recommendation for that, I feel like. Each one, very engaging, very fun. I would almost call it a lighter read. Um, I didn't find it to be, it was definitely not over-intellectualized. So I think this is another good book that can be taken with you on vacation if you're looking for something a little bit lighter but still intelligent. Um, this is a perfect solution for that. Um, it's just, This book I think is just, or you could do it like me and read it in like a day and a half because you're just going back to back to back. And um, like I said, it's, it's just fully engaging the whole time. So I absolutely loved I Was Told There'd Be Cake. Um, by Sloan Crosley. So that is it for these book reviews. As always, thank you for watching and let me know below if you have read any of these books or if you got this capsule, what you thought. Um, and other than that, let's go read some books. Happy reading.